The iPhone 13 models have been out for a few weeks and all of the reviews point to a device very good in many ways. The battery life improvements, camera upgrades, finally getting ProMotion on the iPhone, all of these things are great features and deserve all the plaudits from the reviewers. For me however, despite the fact that I really like this phone, there are some big shortcomings and things that really should have been resolved before the phone's release. So let's start with the most obvious, Lightning. Almost every review has stated this and I'm going to be yet another voice shouting into the sky bemoaning why we have this port for yet another year. Except this year, the shortcomings of Lightning are going to be even sharper in focus. At Apple's keynote last month, they announced that ProRes video recording will be available in up to 4K for the Pro model iPhones. ProRes is a high quality video format allowing a better quality image capture at the cost of much increased file size. 4K 30fps recordings in ProRes could be anywhere between 5 and 8 gigabytes per minute. Filming a short video on your phone would take up considerable space. The problem with Lightning is that it's USB 2, far slower than the speeds offered by more modern ports. If I recorded 1 minute 4K ProRes on my phone and transferred it over to my Mac over Lightning, it would take nearly 2 minutes to complete. That doesn't sound much, you might say. Now imagine I recorded 5 minutes of video for YouTube. That file size is now north of 25 gigabytes and the transfer time is now nearly 8 minutes. Recording in any kind of professional capacity means recording footage much longer than 5 minutes with multiple takes, different files, different angles, B-roll, it all mounts up. A USB 2 connection on any modern device would be laughable, but because it hides behind the Lightning brand, not many people notice. Lots of people are calling for USB-C to be added to the iPhone, and I agree, USB-C should be added to the non-Pro models, but really, we should see something with the transfer speeds of Thunderbolt added to the Pro models. The cynic in me says this may never happen. Apple makes a lot of money from their MFI program, which licensed the technology allowing third-party manufacturers to make lightning cables. It's very lucrative. They would stand to lose a lot of money with the switch to USB-C. Regardless, it's truly shameful that any company, let alone Apple, would release a pro-branded product with such an outdated technology that bottlenecks a major part of the pro user's workflow. This also signifies something very unusual for Apple. We're seeing hardware that is failing to keep up with the demands of the software. Usually with Apple, it's the other way around. Take for instance, the latest iPad Pro with the desktop class M1 processor inside. The bottleneck on that product is the software, which completely fails to take advantage of the iPad's power. It's the reverse situation with this iPhone. I seriously can't get over how messed up it is that Apple sells a thousand dollar iPhone with USB 2. Next up, let's talk about Bluetooth and more specifically audio. Back in June, Apple announced that spatial audio and lossless playback would be offered through their music streaming service. At the time, many pointed out that Apple's own Bluetooth codec called AAC wouldn't support wireless lossless playback. Apple said you would need to run wired headphones through a digital analog converter to get true lossless playback. In truth, wireless lossless audio playback is a pipe dream but there are some audio codecs to give a much higher resolution audio than Apple's AAC codec. Now I think that AAC is actually very good, and I don't want to get into a debate about who can tell the difference between lossless and compressed audio formats. But the truth is, even after launching lossless on their audio streaming service, they have stuck with the same audio codec, which feels a bit lazy on their part. Sony's LDAC is an example of a codec that can transfer much higher quality, 32-bit audio at up to 96 kilohertz. It's not perfect in any sense and not really true lossless, but it's an option for those who want it. I'm not sure why Apple hasn't started exploring using other codecs or developing their own in both their hardware and software. It could be a feature to differentiate the regular and pro models of the iPhone. During the pandemic, there was lots of discussion about the limitations of face ID whilst wearing masks. In short, it doesn't really work. After the iPad Air was released last year with a new Touch ID sensor on the power button, many felt it would be a good idea to have this as a secondary biometric method on the iPhone. 
This is something I really hope to see on this year's models. For me, it's not about whether or not we're wearing a mask whilst trying to unlock our phones, but more about the flexibility having Touch ID as a secondary option gives you. When the iPhone 10 was released, I wasn't a fan of Face ID, as I often found that I had to hold the phone up at quite an unnatural angle to unlock the phone. This has gotten much better now, but there are times I've wanted to take a glance at my phone without picking it up. Now I know you can unlock your phone with your Apple Watch, but many people don't want to get one of those as well, which is entirely reasonable. Another scenario when Touch ID would be easier is when making purchases. I don't know about you, but having to double click the power button to enable Face ID requires me to adjust the grip of my phone, which isn't always comfortable. Resting my thumb on a Touch ID sensor would be a lot better for me. The cameras on this year's iPhones got a decent upgrade and I'm a big fan of cinematic mode, as well as the sensor shift stabilization, which I think is fantastic. The standard wide angle lens on the phone has always been great and the one that everyone uses the most. When the ultra wide was introduced with the iPhone 11 Pro, it was something I've always wanted on an iPhone, but I was disappointed by the noise and distortion on the outer parts of the photograph. This has gotten better on the 12 and now the 13 models, but I still think the outer parts of the photo are a bit noisy, particularly if you're not shooting outdoors in bright conditions. Likewise, the telephoto lens is very noisy and unclear unless you're in optimal lighting. I'm not sure what can be done here as Apple are already achieving minor miracles with such small sensor sizes, but maybe some software optimization could help improve the perceivable quality of the images. And so my final issue with the iPhone 13 is the ProMotion display. Now, before you all leave comments about how could I possibly be negative about Apple, including high refresh rates on their phones, let me start by saying how much I like having a 120 Hertz refresh rate. It really is excellent. What's even better about it is it's adaptive refresh rate running between 10 Hertz and 120 Hertz, which is a great feature in improving battery life. Now, my issue is with the lower limit, the 10 Hertz part. Since the release of the Apple Watch Series 5, we've seen an always on display enabled by the use of a one Hertz mode, meaning the image on the screen refreshes once per minute. Not having this option on the phone has essentially ruled out an always on display. An always on display at 10 Hertz would be a battery life killer. I'm not sure why Apple wasn't able to achieve a one Hertz refresh on the latest displays, or even if that's something on their radar. But having an always on display would be quite handy. Having a quick glance at your phone to check the time or to see if you have any notifications without waking up the display would be good in some situations. For example, if you have your phone docked on your desk. Now this feature, along with the lack of a modern charging and data port, were the biggest disappointments about the phone for me. Now I'm fully aware I'm being quite picky here. The phone is very good and I'm happy to be using it. I think some of what I've said is possibly forgivable given the very high price tag, but the major crime against design and functionality here is that lightning port. So what do you think about the latest phone? Let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please give it an upvote and subscribe if you haven't already. I do have a buy me a coffee page and a Patreon, which I'll put in the description below. Many thanks to those who have supported me there already. Thank you for watching and I'll be back soon with another video.